Well, everybody, it's not a week later. It's some distinguished, different, different, not distinguished, amount of time. Because this episode came out early, I think it came out yesterday, but I didn't watch it till about an hour ago, and now we're here to talk about it, and this probably won't be uploaded for a little while, so we're probably about two days late in general, and we might be just on time if the episode actually came out on time. Imagine how that works. Nonetheless, we are here, we are live. Um, fuck, I'm paranoid now, I'm looking down, is everything unmuted, is everything being recorded, is stream here? They all are. Someone watching leave a comment? Incredible stuff. Carwin's comments? Elite Ari's not lying. But nonetheless, this is another edition of The Last of Us Review Show, where I watched the episode about 20 minutes ago, finished watching it about 20 minutes ago, and have taken no notes. So it'll probably be short and all over the place, but that's the way we like things. Um, this was the second episode in the Sam and Henry memery, even though they were only really in this episode, in the very last finishing bit of last episode. But what were we, they in Kansas or something? I can't remember if it's Kansas the state or Kansas City, uh, which is actually in Virginia or something. I can't remember fucking US geography. There's two Kansas cities, I think. There's Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City... I don't think it's literally Virginia, because that's quite a way away. But it's something. Um, and I can't remember which one we're actually in. But nonetheless, we're here. It's the second part of that. Um... Probably the most dissimilar to the game... No, no, the Bill and Frank thing was probably the most dissimilar um, to the game thing. There was only, what, there was maybe two moments that were very game-like, like identical, um, which was Joel saying, Henry, give me the gun, and then what Henry says in that scene. I think there wasn't a single other, like, the lines are the same. Like, um, the sniper dude didn't have any of his lines where he's just like, fuck you, or you're gonna die, asshole, or whatever it is. No, actually, that was last time stuff. The sniper says something really annoying in the game because that level's kind of hard, uh, which is funny because Joel does it all in about 30 seconds uh, in the episode, which was funny. Um, but anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, it was dissimilar to the game. Dissimilar does mean what I think it means. Yes, it does. Um, I saw it had a 9.7 on IMDb next to the binge thing, which is insane. Um, I don't... I think the first three episodes might have been better. It's probably better than the last one, though. Um, where do we start? A snake Zelo cannot can subscribe with Prime a dragon. Ten month in a row. Well, oh, has that ever happened in a YouTube video? It must have. Uh because I was just curious if I would get dinged for copyright for the snake cannot eat the dragon quote from Cowboy Bebop. What a television show. We're not talking about the live-action Cowboy Bebop. We're talking about... I wonder if the live-action Cowboy Bebop has that line. Elite Ari will have to tell us in the chat, because um, he's watched it and I haven't. Remember when I made that trailer react? But I didn't actually watch the fucking thing. Can you believe that? Sorry to interrupt. Continue. Thank you, CeeLo Pilt. Um, what a respectful... Uh, what do you call him? When you're a king? Subordinate, I have here. No, that's not what you call him. What an excellent... Not peasant, because that sounds too harsh. Subsidiary is like a company. Um, I don't know, I was looking for a word there. I have absolutely no idea, but it's a good show. Elite Ari does like the Cowboy Bebop Netflix series. Now, if we get any um, comments on this video, it'll be about... Uh, people freaking out about Elite Ari liking the Cowboy Bebop Netflix. Disciple? Disciple might have been the word I was looking for. Um, doesn't really have to do with kings. But nonetheless, enough Cowboy Bebop tangent, tangents for everybody. I, I'm, yeah, doing these after watching them is because all I want to talk about is the end. Um, something I don't remember if I mentioned in the video last time, but we watched the preview for this episode last time on stream. And uh, it seemed like from the... Tr I didn't know if we if this was a thing they'd announced uh, before the show had came out, but I could tell that uh, uh, Sam, not Henry, uh, was going to be deaf in the show, which was interesting, and that actually did happen. So when that was confirmed, I was thinking I was cool. I was spotting it in the preview. Um, so that changes his character lo uh, quite a lot. Uh, Sam in the game is kind of just a shitty little kid, which is fine and likable enough. Um, and Henry's kind of just a shitty older brother, 
Well, no, he's good. He's kind of a good older brother, I guess. He's always telling him to leave things. Uh, that wasn't nice. Uh, but he betrays you at one point. Um, they kind of kept that. Uh, I I kept I keep forgetting their brothers. What 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 would you think they are? Father and son. Um, but anyway, on the Sam point, Sam was a lot cuter in the show which I think is probably going to lead to a lot of people saying it was better than in the game. I think, again, it was just so different that... And I probably would side with the game as which version I like more. The... How do I feel about the ending? Father, son, Alito. What an idiot. He's clearly the brother. Um, especially in the show, he looks really young. Uh, though he looks pretty young in the game, too. Henry, that is. Um, so throughout, there's a building sense of tension. Oh, so the last scene, because this is another thing they slightly changed, is um, obviously the line in the Sam scene, because Sam and Ellie have a conversation before they go to sleep in the game where he's very mopey. Um, and he asks, he basically asks the questions he asks in the scene, but obviously they're verbal. And there's a bit more of a back and forth. Um, but him suddenly talking about, do you think the people are still in there? He asks about heaven, which I think is something they should have put in there because I've, I've felt that line coming, but it never came. Or, or him writing that on his uh, pad thing uh, in the um, at the end of the show. I think that would have sent people over the edge. But I'm, I'm assuming everybody's crying at this. I went to look for my normie's reaction and it's not up yet. So that's fucking disgusting. Um... So I don't know how people feel, because the only people I, uh, I see ever talk about this is the normies, because uh, number one reactors, you know? Um, see other people turning out. Um, yeah, but I was waiting for that. But obviously the big line from that scene is Ellie telling, like, she... Uh, the, the back and forth where he's like, what are you afraid of? And she says, like, Scorpions is sort of a meme answer. And he's sort of pissy at that because he's trying to have a real conversation because he's very scared because he knows he got bit. Um, and then she gives a real answer. I think... Does she say she's scared of dying? And then... Or is that something Sam says? I don't quite remember exactly. But then she get, gives the line, I'm scared of ending up alone. And obviously that's very relevant uh, to the end of the second game. And anyway, we can shoehorn any sort of a reference to the second game. The greatest thing humans ever made. I'm over the moon. Um, but obviously in all the cool Last of Us Part 2 edits where you put the music over in the lines and make it all dramatic, that's always a line that's in there. I think it's the end of one of them, of probably the best one I ever saw, where it's like Ellie as she's walking away at the end of Part 2 and, and it's saying, I'm scared of ending up alone. And she did it to herself. What a dumb bitch. We hate Ellie around here. Uh, just so good. Um, so I was freaking out of that. So the emotions were high and you definitely feel very bad for the dead kid. Um, it is a very sad scene and it is very, and this is actually something Miller brought up previously where he said, um, he wondered if they were going to have a different outcome with Henry and Sam because it would be too similar to what happened with Bill. Now, the good thing in the game is that Bill is still alive and he doesn't die. So then you don't sort of, cause what they because a big criticism of The Walking Dead, I remember, was that, like, if, uh, especially in the early seasons, they would sort of, like, int- like focus on a character. They wouldn't necessarily introduce a character, but they would focus on a character for an episode and then kill him off. And it sort of... Uh, that frustrates people a little bit, where it's sort of filler-like, because, oh, we get invested in this person's uh, character and their relationships with everybody, then they die, and it's almost like, well, moving on, I guess. Um, the last of us sort of broke that mold because yes, Tess did die, but then Bill didn't. And so when Henry and Sam show up, it's not a foregone conclusion that they're going to die. You could break off from them or, or, or something like that. And then again, they die and then you go do the Tommy stuff and Tommy doesn't die. Um, should have that fucking bastard, but we'll get to Tommy later. Um, and then after that, you never have any more companions, I don't think. Um, because you just go to the college, and then it's Ellie by herself, and then you get David, obviously, but he's an evil bastard, and then we shank him with the machete. You don't do what Ellie does in a cutscene. You gotta crawl around and not stand on plates. Uh, crazy. I wonder if that'll be in the show. Um, and then after that, we're at the Firefly Lace. 
So no, there are no more fucking thanks for helping me out, chat. There are no more uh, companions. But so far they've killed off everybody. So I guess that'll make people think maybe they can kill off Tommy next time. That'll be cool when they don't. Um, oh, th what I was getting to with all of this, with this uh, tepid monologue, was that they created a similar atmosphere of Sam actually shows Ellie the bite. And obviously, if you've seen the game, you know it. But it creates the same atmosphere of, like, people knowing they're going to die. Like, death being inevitable. Like the uh, Frank and Bill stuff. Where it's sort of like, uh, this is my worst nightmare in the world. Which is like, you know it's like your last day. So you have to go and do things. And it adds this very depressive, melancholic lens to everything. Um, there was something interesting about the dramatic beats of that ending, too. Where it was sort of like, it felt almost sudden... And I don't want to say rushed, because as we've demonstrated, they can have as long as they want in these episodes. So it's not like, oh, they ran out of time or something. But it did feel... And it was definitely intentional, but I don't know how I feel about it. Because he just sort of reveals that he has the bite, and there's no sort of dramatic mu uh, cue, music cue or anything. Um, and there's... Which it very much was in the game, which could be something I could see people not liking or making fun of. It's sort of like he has this talk about death and then Ellie leaves the room and then he dramatically pulls up his thing for the camera uh, and shows his bite. Whereas in this, he's just sort of showing it to Ellie, which I, I guess makes more sense uh, in a logistical sense. Um, I wonder how people react to that because obviously I knew it was coming. So I'm just like, well, are we just putting it out there. But um, the same thing happened with Henry shooting him. It's very, very quick. Whereas... Uh, part of the tension and the really good tension in the game scene for that is that it sort of goes on for a while and he's sort of fighting over Ellie and he's sort of looking Joel and they're sort of like, oh, well, hurry up, you got to do something. Um, whereas it happens very quickly to the point where you never actually feel like Ellie's in any real danger. Um, and so is the, um, the build up to him shooting himself. They opted to make it very snappy, which is interesting. Again, I feel like I like the game more, but... <sighs> Again, the show is so different, and it's trying to do its own thing, and it's so competent. I just wish they would... Ch I guess I wish they would change more things. Because it, it usually is like this, and it has been like this for the last four episodes. Is every time they will go off script, tiki, um, I usually like that stuff more. Because there's not a direct comparison. Um, and I think it is just bad, because I know it so well. That, like, anything outside of it, and even the vocal inflections not being the same and it being off, it doesn't make... It just sort of irritates me, because it's like, oh, well, that's not how it should sound. Uh, and it's a very surface-level, like, engagement, but it's almost overpowering in every sense. Um, did you cry? I did not cry at young Sam's death. Uh, she's scared of being alone. Oh, I don't know what Elite RE is talking about here. Why did he say that? Why did he Why did he repeat that she's scared of being alone? Oh, he probably was bringing that up because I first said that she said she was scared of dying. But I know she brings up two scares uh, in that scene. I understand Alito's comments now. Um, but Sam, I think, says dying. We can watch the scene on stream afterwards. YouTube audience, you don't get to do that. Because believe it or not, game scenes do get copyrighted sometimes. Because that Last of Us video that I made for the Patreon, when I uploaded it, did get claimed. Uh, and I did play the scene in full in that video, I think. I don't know, I haven't watched that video in a long time, and neither should you. It's old and bad. Um, but yeah, it, it was interesting, I guess. Um, other stuff that seemed sudden was sort of... Ha there was a point where they were they got out the other side, and I was like, well, obviously we have to run into Kathleen and uh, Tommy, not actual Tommy, but game Tommy. I forget his actual name in the show. I'm like, oh, they're going to have to run into them again, because obviously otherwise we'll never see them again, and all, the, all this time it would have been wasted, and there's no like plot beat here or confrontation or climax with these characters. Um... I guess maybe I felt it was a tiny bit shoehorned into the sniper section. Now, they connect it, and it is connected in the game back to the Kansas... Well, the Pittsburgh stuff, because, again, the, the truck comes through when it does go into the building. Uh, a bloater and the gang don't come out, but um, some infected show up. Um, hey, we didn't get the scene with the dogs either. 
Um, oh, and they cut all of the ish stuff. You just sort of there. They somehow were in the subway stuff. Um, it specifically wasn't a subway thing. It was a tunnels thing. Um, am I being negative right now, chat? Do I feel negative? I haven't really had time to process it. I don't think so. Definitely not in an overall sense. Um, but yeah, the old sniper dude was interesting because obviously I was waiting for him to be waiting. Um, like in the game, how you think he's going to be at the sniper, but he's actually back there. It's not an old dude. Well, he's a kind of old dude, but not that old dude. And they start rumbling. Um, it would be a cool little action scene, but instead he sort of tries to shoot Joel and gets sh shot instead. Um, and Joel sort of says, don't do it. That was a cool moment. Um, what was I saying before this? We were getting to a thing. Oh, the Kathleen stuff. She also died very quickly. Um, I do like the sort of revenge com commentary. It's kind of... <laughs> the Last of Us 2 is not about revenge being bad, LaMau. Um, where Kathleen sort of understands all of the motivations, but still is like, well, but fuck you. <laughs> um, and it's deeply selfish. Like, the reason is, like, you killed my guy to let your guy live. And I just won't get over it. And she tries to go on this monologue about fate or whatever, but it's obviously uh, bullshit and copium. Uh, she's just mad because uh, her brother died instead of Sam. Um, and they both made very selfish decisions. Um, and it makes her a bad guy. Um, I do. I did like that approach. Um, but her, her sort of just getting jumped on and us running away it was interesting. Um, certainly felt quick. Um, I am curious how uh, what other people think. Is there a whole group of hyper-analytical plot bros that are very shitty with this episode? Because I could make that fucking YouTube video if I had to. Um, I don't know if I would agree with it, but uh, it's easy. The whole scene where Kathleen's group turned up was cool and good, but definitely a little bit convoluted. Yeah, I definitely got a bit of that vibe too. And when the... This is just a dramatic thing. But obviously, all of the zombies jumping out at the exact right time to save Henry. Uh, why didn't they come out earlier? Why did this... Now, I get it that they were probably buried underground. Um, so the blowing up truck let them out, but they didn't jump up right away. I guess it slowly broke through. Whatever, we will get over it. Uh, I'm eagerly awaiting Ben Shapiro's thoughts. I've only heard memes from Preston talking about what... Pre uh, what not what, Preston talking about what Preston said. Now, that would be a great video. A person talking about what Ben Shapiro said in uh, some of his videos uh, about it. Uh, zombies were in it, so surely he liked it. Yes, I do remember hearing that he didn't like episode three because there were no zombies in it, guys. That's why he didn't like it. Um, but yes, we did get a very cool action set piece where it looks like a Game of Thrones battle scene where a million fucking zombies come out. I still don't know how I feel about this horde stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure the only time we ever see a horde in the game is when Ellie and uh, Tommy see it when they're sniping in the second game from a very from a long way away. Um, it feels very supernatural, which is an odd thing to complain about, but I think that's where the complaint comes from. Um... And it's fine, like the blow to throwing a dude or whatever. We we already established that we're making the zombies way harder to kill in the show than they were in the games. Um, I wonder if they'll still have like a scene where Ellie kills a blow to single-handedly in the fucking arcade and it'll be a big moment because it's being built up as an even bigger threat. Abby's just going to fucking arm wrestle one and then beat it up. Um, but yeah... I don't know. Wasn't there basically a horde chasing uh, Joel and Abby? Yeah, that, that probably counts as one, too, at the beginning of the game. But even still, it didn't feel like an overwhelming World War Z horde, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, which is kind of what it feels like in the show. Um, and there definitely, I don't think, was as many, because it seemed endless. The, 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 they were still running out as they ran off at the very end of the scene. Um... But yeah, so it was interesting. Um, I don't know. Everything here is like cool, but it comes with a... Maybe I didn't like it. Um, 
It was interesting. Something we had mentioned last week was like uh, Kathleen has a funny little like housewife voice. Um, and I guess the point was to have it kind of be annoying in the end. Um, where she sort of seems very like not emotional and not vulnerable. There's a word. But almost weak, like you imagine a housewife to be for whatever reason. Um, But she's sort of also ruthless, and the clashing of that was interesting. Because last time I wasn't sure if she was that ruthless. Uh, Even if the her shooting the doctor was probably supposed to help indicate that. But in this episode, you definitely felt it. So I guess I liked her character overall. Um... <laughs> the Tommy doing getting the um the death screen of the the gouging the eyes and then ripping the head off was cool. That was a cool little Easter egg. Is that an Easter egg? Not really. A reference, I guess. Karen esque. I think it's no. I think it's different to that because I think it's like domesticated housewife more than Karen. Though a Karen is probably has overlap with housewifiness, um, but I do think it's a very different vibe. Um, we're all about vibes here, chat. Um, uh, the the first half of the episode was very good, and again, it's just sort of the dumb moments where they're hanging out. Um, they really do the legwork uh, to make Sam and Henry likable at the beginning. Then they sort of. Uh, the unraveling of, um, uh, what Henry did to sort of be a bad guy, um, was very interesting. It reminded me of Casablanca for whatever reason, and how, um, oh, what's Igrid, I always fuck up her name, uh, Bergman's fucking character's name in that, I can't remember, but how her motivations throughout, uh, uh, sort of, uh, Th- uh, it was slowly revealed um, It was interesting It sort of had the same beats Where initially it's sort of like You like the character And you've just seen them interact with things Then you find out the thing about the character uh, No, then you hear somebody else say something about the character But you don't believe it because you like them Then they self-admit it And then you see another character that you like react to it And they say, well, I don't like that I don't work with the rats And then he says, and then they continue to admit to it and don't say, oh, no, it's not that bad, but just say, yes, you do, because it's what we need right now. And then later it's revealed that it actually wasn't that bad. Um, So that structure. But anyway, um, I feel like she reminds me of someone from The Walking Dead, but I can't place it. Maybe somebody in Terminus. Well, I don't have a good grasp on either of these things. Um... But yeah, so I did like the beginning bits quite a bit. Oh, another big thing about the Ham and Senry thing... Sam and... Senry? What did I just say? The Sam and Henry thing in the game is that there's a very abrupt cut at the end of the scene, and then we cut to the next season, um, and it's just Joel and Ellie sort of doing their thing, um, which is obviously used the next time we cut seasons to winter a lot, where you don't know if Joel's dead or not. I wonder if they're going to have him be impaled again. Uh... I wonder if people will be mad about the believability of him surviving it more so in the show than in the video game. Uh, Anyway, Uh, there's a very hard cut, and then we cut to them in sort of the green thing as they approach the dam, and they're near Tommy's. Um, And then you find the grave that is kind of like... Now, I can't remember, because they find a grave right outside the dam, and there's a little teddy bear on it. It's clearly a kid's grave. Um, And they sort of lightly touch on Henry and Sam, but then they never bring it up again. Um, and I think Ellie even says, like, we never talked about it, um, which is super interesting and implies a bunch of things in the game. Um, whereas we do see the aftermath a lot, like there, Ellie does cry, um, we get the close-up of her crying, and then we cut to them digging graves. Now, I don't remember in the scene where they look at the kid's grave whether or not they imply that they, because I think there might be an implication there that they did bury the other two, um... Like, it's like the graves we dug for whatever. It's probably said a lot more subtly, subtly if it exists. So that was interesting. So if I was about to complain that they changed it to have them dig graves, but actually I was thinking about what my counter, what my opposition would say, what the evil comments would say that don't exist because nobody leaves comments on this video where. Um, and they might bring that up, but I don't remember, honestly. Um, 
But they definitely change it, because Ellie is the one that wants to... She asks... Which way is west, and then she starts walking off. Um, it sort of seems like her trying to repress it more so. Um, and then she writes, I'm sorry, on the thing, which is very cute, because she promised to stay up with him all night, but she fell asleep when he turned, which obviously calls back her backstory with Riley. Um, oh, and there's a lot of added, like... There's a whole added layer if you know about the Riley thing, and assuming they do the Riley thing the same way they did in the game of the show, they're like, oh, this is happening to Ellie again, um, knowingly, uh, where she's going to have to watch somebody else. Uh, she, she seemed hopeful that putting her blood into, like, his blood would fix it. Um, now, obviously, that's not how things work, and you sort of know that in the scene. Um, I wonder if any reactors bought into it. Um, but it's a very cute, like... And it's a very cute, dumb gesture that a kid would come up with. So I liked that a lot. Um, and she sort of seems confident in it working. And you could uh, you could obviously interpret it as a lot of, like, denial and stuff. But that was, that was all good. Um, so yeah, I like that a lot. Oh, and just like last time where we introduced a little... One of the little aspects from the game, and more specifically of Ellie's character, we introduced the joke book last time, and we get the Savage Starlight stuff for the first time this time. Um... I wonder if we'll ever get the... Because they think it's from earlier, so we've already gone over it, but Ellie complaining about how it's a good read, but to be continued and the apocalypse really sucks. Uh, that's always a cute uh, cute scene I remember sometimes from the first game. Uh, probably not going to get that. Um, but, um... That came up again at the end, right? And I can't remember how. Because they were saying endure and survive, and then Joe was like, well, that's repetitive. It's not the best, or whatever. That was all funny. Um, I can't remember. Something about the book came back. Um, and it was similar to the joke book coming back at the end of the last episode, and I thought it was very clever. Um, why did Joel have a reaction when he saw that Ellie wrote that on the grave? Uh, did he realize she thinks it's her fault? Is it in a... It... A game thing. Well, he, I think it sort of goes into... Well, he said earlier in the episode, right, the thing about it's easier when you're a kid or whatever, but I think it's him realising that it's probably not. Um, it's also his, like, continuing, like, kids shouldn't have to go through this, so her feeling guilty um, sort of rubs him the wrong way and stuff like that. Um, that's what I thought it was. Um, but, yeah. There was something about the Savage Starlight thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, and that somehow transitioned into me somehow bringing up the preview. Because uh, we just watched the preview for next week's episode before the stream. Very interesting. We are seeing Jacksonville. It looks exactly like the second game and absolutely nothing like the first game. Though I think they're only in the plant in the first game, right? And that's like a little off from where the actual city is. But they have the fucking lights from the second game. And from the E3 press conference, guys, I'm freaking the fuck out. Um, will Dina and Jesse be in next episode? Is Sarah the name of Ellie's first girlfriend? Is she going to be in the next episode? Uh, assumingly, Maria is. Tommy's going to be there. Is the bigot sandwich guy going to be there? It's just one guy. Um, who else is there? The, is the old dude would still be alive? The old Firefly? I forget his name. Um, the guy with all the weed and the Crash Bandicoot porn. Um, are they going to be there, chat? I can't wait. I was going to say, is Abby going to be there? But she doesn't have a reason to be there yet. Joel hasn't killed her daddy. Oh, are they going to give him more lines in the, in the, in episode 10? Abby's got to be in episode 10. Either she's running around the fucking plant, uh we might see the what if the open to episode 10 is the zebra scene they could totally do that and Abby goes to get her oh get him well actually well that's what you do in the game um crazy we could do it all only four episodes left true I did learn that it's only nine episodes which makes sense next time will be all the Tommy stuff oh I didn't even think next episode is gonna be the mighty thin ice line they better not do it word by word, but it's almost certainly what the one they have to do, and it's going to piss me off because it's not going to sound right. So we got that is one episode. So how many we got left? Four. Then we got the college stuff. Then we got 
the winter stuff. And then we got the Firefly stuff at the end. There we go, I planned it out. Don't worry, I'm a fucking genius. Uh, fucking Naughty Dog and HBO can pay me in the meantime. Gonna be epic post credit scene if it slowly zooms in on her and she says, I'm gonna fucking kill Joel Miller. It'll be cool. It's just a, it's just her and she was out golfing. Well, now, um, it has to be in there. Like, it, unironically, she has to be in episode 10, even if it is a post credit scene. Um, God, it's gonna be so fucking cool. I'm gonna get the soyest of soy chills. Um, fuck, there was something else I wanted to bring up from the preview. She's definitely in it. Shut up, Elite RE, you fucking idiot. Don't jinx it. Um, let's bring the fucking preview back up. I'm not showing it to you. You're sticking with the image we got. Chat, I told you to remind me of certain things. Oh my god, is my fucking laptop lagging or what? I didn't even scroll through binge yet. We could, we could keep this going for fucking 15 years. Uh, where's history? It's over on the side. Um, we got Tommy and Joel arguing. Oh, Ellie's going to find out about Sarah next episode. There's going to be a fucking photograph. Oh, also in the preview, it seems like they they talk about uh, Henry and Sam again here. Um, oh, and also they cut the scene where Tommy sees him at the gate. That's my goddamn brother. What a scene. Great delivery in that. Uh, that's very different. Like, they see each other in the preview and they run up to each other. She's, oh, if I go back, I bet Marie is standing next to him if I pause it. No, it's just some fucking bloke. Oh my god, the lights are on my screen chat. They're right there. They have an argument. I don't know if there's... Oh my god, there's a shot of Tommy walking away into Jackson. Just like at the beginning, after the fucking introductory scene in part two. Oh my goodness, all of part two stuff. There's a dog and Ellie shooting at something. Lamau. Um, why did we bring that up? I don't remember. Thinking about a sequel is so hard because I just can't see Bella Ramsey's appearance changing enough. Uh, she is dressing like a little girl, acting like a little girl, uh, and being made to look like a little girl in the fucking show right now. She's 19. They'll dress her like she's 19. She'll be fine. Uh, you just don't understand costume design and, uh, what do you call it? Mise en scene enough. You didn't go to film school like I did. And by film school, I mean grade 11 and 12 film and TV. Um, have you seen Paranoia Agent? No, I have not. Um, but it's got the fucking berserk dude on the soundtrack. Crazy. Uh, don't know what that has to do with anything, Cichlid. Um, that's local g degenerate Cichlid in the chat, by the way. Um, the last scene was very good. I feel like I didn't say that, but I liked it. And so was the cool fucking fight scene, I guess. Even if it does feel kind of not Last of Us-y. And by not Last of Us-y, I mean not like the game. It's pretty, it's pretty in line with the, uh, show. The scene with Kathleen and Tommy talking in the bedroom was uh, pretty cool. Um... Oh, Ellie and Sam being kids together is another thing that's from the game. Now, obviously, they made the age difference a lot different. Um, there's kind of an implied, like, not romance thing, but there's something like that where it's sort of like the Joel and Henry sharing a look or something, which obviously doesn't happen here because the age difference is so different. And Ellie takes on much of a big sister role. And the point in the game is that she kind of does too because uh, Henry tries to lie about his age to pretend that he's like 12 when he's actually 11 and Ellie's 14. Um, so it's very much like an admiration up to Ellie type thing. Um, and you definitely get that through a lot of their interactions in the game. Um, they just seem like friends here. Um... But yeah, that is kind of everything. We we kind of went over everything in the episode. Why am I being called a degenerate? I don't get the meme. Because that video I watched from the Masked Man. Um, is this damage control for your association with me? No, I'm just trying to get in good with my good friend, the Masked Man. Uh, did you like the zombie that killed Kathleen? I know, it was doing flips and stuff. It was like a little girl, I think. Um, Cichlid's like, oh yeah. How did he not get it from the beginning? 
Uh, just because I was a week late to watch the video or whatever. We'll talk about that video after the stream. Um, but I think that's everything for The Last of Us Episode 5. Lead Ari refuses to get in video call. We don't video call, in voice call, whatever you call it, uh, to talk about it. So we just have slow episodes. Uh, not slow episodes, short episodes. And not episodes, but videos. I'm really fucking it up. Screwing the pooch up at the end of this uh, review. What do we call these things? Videos? The podcast talked about why Sam's death and the age change. It was pretty good. I did really like the podcast that I listened to um, in episode one. I just haven't had the time. I haven't even had the time to watch other reactions uh, or inside the episodes. At some point, I'll probably go back and listen to them. I'm very busy, chat. My time is very valuable. I'll join one day when the time is right. No, he won't. When we see Abby, Elite RE is making a pledge that he must show up. Um, or maybe we'll do a whole season thing at the end or something. But I'm not rewatching it at all. Um, so I guess it's probably like a week out. Queen Abby, yes. Um, I think I decided recently that I do like Ellie more than Abby. Because originally, when I was drafting my top 10 characters of all time list, I had Ellie slash Abby. And then I changed it to just Abby. And then I changed it to Abby slash Gabby. And then I just changed it back to Abby. But I think I'm just changing it to Ellie now. And they're both, it's always like the number eight slot, I think. Right above Farnese and Rei and Army, but right beneath Revy and Kaska in the game. You know, crazy. Horrible, horrible video. It wasn't even written by him. G Generosity, never heard of him. Uh, well, stop spoiling. Uh, where is Mikasa? She's not on the list. Levi didn't even make the list. And Gabby hasn't made the list either. No Attack on Titan characters make the list. We'll draft the list again. Uh, that's a little tease for you and the YouTube audience right now. You can go over and watch the stream VOD to see me draft the list out. If you somehow haven't seen me draft it out a million other things. She can't, get a, she can't even get on the top 100. She would definitely be in the top 100. But with that being said to the YouTube audience, we'll be back in a week or something. Support links in the description below. Thanks.